Friday night lights in Bear Country. Day Ward side sat in fourth, hoping to remind well, the rest of the league that they will be in the mix of title contenders come the end of the season. Tonight, taking on Nathan Smith's lightning side, who've had a fortnight to think about that loss to Leicester Tigers. And looking at the two sides, well, we've over 20 internationals that are taking the field from the first minute. For Bristol, they've seven in the pack, with co-captain Abby Ward and Alicia Joyce Butcher's key personnel in terms of the home side's line-out successes. Elian Clark comes into the front row alongside fellow Scott Lana Skeldon, and Dr Pam will see you now. A welcome return for Simi, who's back from an ankle injury. Wigan McVarley made headlines this week after being named in Scotland's wider training squad ahead of the women's Six Nations. Amber Reid will co-captain from midfield. Another love of and Renika Bonner start in the back three for the first time this calendar year. On the bench, Jenny Hesketh has been named in a Wales training squad. Pretty fine reward for her six successive starts through December and January. And for Lumber and Lightning, well, Nathan Smith said his team got what they deserved against Leicester Tigers for not showing up, but he'll be confident he'll get the right reaction this evening. He's forced into one change in his pack since Kath O'Donnell picked up a quad injury, so USA Eagle Halle Taufa'o steps in to join Lily Ives Campion in the engine room. Captain Rachel Malcolm and alongside birthday girl from yesterday's Sadia Kabea in the Bears' back row. Helen Arona will pull the strings at 10 with that familiar red rose. Former World Player of the Year outsider Emily Scarra wearing the 12 shirt after 13 months out of the game, and actually she's not worn the 12 shirt a whole lot for club or country. In contrast, the first start for Ellen Scantlebury on the wing with the experienced Helen Nelson for company of fullback, and Sarah Svoboda on the left revenge will be returning for just her second match since the season opener. Canadian is a real game changer when she wants to be. And they are pleased that the fans have been turning out for this fixture just the second time at Ashton Gate. And Lockwood Lightning. Fiftieth appearance for Helen Nelson, and uh, our head coach Nathan Smith said his side weren't emotionally in the right place for that match against PWR newcomers Leicester Tigers a fortnight ago. Sure to say his side are not a poorer one due to that loss. Fully convinced that this Lightning side could beat anyone in the league, but conversely, they can lose to anyone as well. Rachel Malcolm, Scottish captain. The last few words of motivation. Spoke to Christine Belisle, the Scottish prop this week, and she said there has inevitably been that bounce around the squad, knowing that Scarrett is back in the mix. She will just be hoping for a very quiet resumption of her playing career, Katie Daly McLean. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it is. If there's ever a person who would want a quiet return, she is the girl. However, she has picked Friday night at Bristol live on TNT, so maybe she's changed. Well, Bristol Bears are making them wait before they emerge to join us. Seven-time Women's Six Nations Grand Slammer, five-time top point scorer, Rugby World Cup winner, former World Cup player of the year, not to mention, you know, host of her own named podcast as well. But uh... let's not forget, there is a home side here, very much keen to make a statement. Bears, of course, also tasted defeat last time out, but they are unbeaten in their last four PWR matches against Loughborough Lightning. They would have been desperate for his side to put in the sort of performances consistently that perhaps Bears fans enjoyed more of last season. Saying that, three wins out of the last four, five points against Exeter Chiefs, Harlequins and Leicester Tigers. The loss was against the league leaders. He's promised his team are coming out to play tonight. And what a battle we'll have, the likes of Holly Aitchison. The 10 shirt for Bristol. And of course, with Hannah Rowland in the ten shirt. Mike uh, Hudson is our referee for this one, assisted by Hamish Grant and Gareth Holsgrove. In our track, the TMO is Nikki O'Donnell. Okay. 
Friday Night Lights Final at round Ashton round. Gate. Bristol Bears against Loughborough Lightning. <laughs> Wonderful to have your company wherever you're joining us. And it will be. Straight down and into the hands. Delaney Burns. It's a little bit of link play from the forwards in the back line initially. Although I'd expect a little bit of grease on the ball. It's been pretty wet for most of the afternoon. Well, certainly up and down the country, but in the West Country until, well, about half an hour before the game started. So it will be a little wet underfoot. Shot for Amber Reid. Parents won't make touch, though, because Helena Rowland was well-placed. Away from Meg Davis. into the midfield. Davey wants to get Simi Pam out of the way. Helen Nelson popping up at first receiver, then the pump of the arms and into the hands of Scarrett. Scarrett gets it over the top. We'll just be very pleased to have had that first touch of the ball in anger. It's a good bit of go forward at the minute. Frenzy. It's just running into the referee, Sadia Kabea. Picking her targets. <laughs> what a great opening one half minute, so isn't it? Both sides, like we know, toe came to play. Here we just look at Loughborough and again, it's that link, isn't it? Lovely little dummy, and then there she is again, drawn in players, looks very comfortable, doesn't she? But for me, it's a it's great set of intent from both sides who clearly want to play in that line there from Sergio Cabello. I think the referee might have helped Bristol there. Part of furniture on the field, so uh, Five, in the circumstances, it will just be the restart six, from the scrum. Yeah. In fact, oh, early engagement on the far side, they're not going to hang around. Daisy Hibbert Jones is going to take the free kick, not enough for lightning gap from scrum time, but it's just. Did it go forwards there? Was it stripped? Yeah. Use it. Little knock on. Either way, Simi Pam to try and set Bristol a bit more of a platform. Back from that ankle injury sustained in November against Exeter Chiefs. Kira Bevan, Swansea Use ball, it. scrum half. Bristol stop. Good. To make the clearance. Yeah, back and forth. Back and bouncing in field, but ended up being touched by a scantle break. Yeah, it was a tricky one to take, isn't it? You know, going, having to turn, taking the ball. Going backwards, but here we see free kick. Daisy Hibbert breaks early, and it's Abby Ward in there with a great rip. You know, three Bristol tacklers there. But Bristol have gone. That's one son. Elian Clark. Scottish prop doing the carrying duty. Then it's just fumbled by Holly Aitchison. And the error. Celebrated by the opposition. Yeah, it's, it's hard, isn't it? You know, I mean, the ground is really, really slippy, so the potential that ball's a bit slippy there for Holly Aston, potentially just taking an eye off it and start to think about what she's going to do next. But ultimately, Bristol need to get out of their half now, you know. They've had a lot of possession in here. They need to get out. Two Scottish number threes. Packing down, they'll be on those opposite corners. Elian Clark, Christine Bilal might just Chris! have a little hello to each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's exactly Five. what happens in scrum time. Set. All very polite, I'm sure. Ball tumbled along the floor. Scarrett's going to have to try and tidy it up, but referee says that it's gone forwards. And this, for me, is where it's yeah, really, right. really interesting. So you've got two sides that want to come here, they want to come and play. They're trying to, however, conditions are yeah, probably I'm making it difficult, balls a bit See, slippy. Bit, now, what, what do you do? Do you keep fighting these side, conditions, or the option is what do you have in your armory? And I think, for me, this is where Bristol definitely yeah. needs to develop that element. You've got some phenomenal kickers, Holly Aitchison, Kira Beverin can box kick, Amber Reid can kick. So 
do you give love for the ball and say, look, we're going to let you play and we're going to go to our defence, which is one of the best defences in the league, conceded the fewest tries and say, we're just going to batter you and, and see what you've got. Crouch! Bristol Bears do like to run the ball from anywhere. Would present itself as a fairly standard position to get an exit from a kick, but is that what Bristol are going to do from here? It's Marston Mulhern onto Bev and Reed is on that right hand side, and they will play it through the hands and find Renika Bonner, but she's close to that touchline, she's been shown the touchline. Taken in by Purple, so Bristol. Oh, but it was, as you heard, the referee say, front off here. the lightning hand. So, Bristol will get the exit of sorts. Lana Skeldon on the score sheet a couple of weeks ago against Gloucester Hartbury. Looked like it was going to be a way off the top of the line out first time, and then just a little pause. And it's Reed who carries it up. A little bit of movement in midfield just to open it up for the Scottish well, centre, Meryl Smith. Turnover is there and away from Trevathan. Tarafoto. Then it's Rachel Malcolm. Gets the call out the back from Scarrett. She'll have been missing that familiar oh, voice behind there, Rachel happy. Malcolm. It's the Scottish skipper again, driving it forwards. Davy looking at the options. Roland just behind Scarrett, had to check to take it. Oh, and then just puts it on the toe, Scarrett, that's going to sit up beautifully into the 22, come Lopra Lightning, but Sadia Kabea couldn't quite hold the pass. Ben Lost forward. Lovely little dig through from Emily Scarrett, she's turned up with the box of tricks. She has, hasn't she? What a touch that is, you know, she's got a little bit of a pass. That checked her there of Helena Rowlands, but I mean, what a bit of class. Outside of your right That's foot, L sits up, lovely. Doesn't look like a girl who's been away from Let's the game. And, and Sergeant Kabe is unlucky there. She's just re on top, probably just need a little bit of space between uh, her and uh, Hallie Tafu there. Well, I think the graphics on screen tell you all you need to. <laughs> She looks like not a 12, though, was, uh, had the opportunity to just grab a quick word with her before the game. Said, how, how often have you had the 12 on the back? And she said, not, not very often at all, not really for club or country. She thought, she thought possibly one occasion, but certainly been in that midfield. How difficult or different are those roles, Katie? I think they're huge. I think, uh, as he was saying the other day, she played more 10 than she has at 12. So it is, it is interesting. And, you know, 12, a bit more of a distributor, 13, a bit more of a kind of a runner receiver. So, but, you know, I mean, she's had two lovely moments there, hasn't she? So like Emily Scarrett yeah. does, just grows into everything she does. <laughs> you could say that with more of a furled lip next time. <laughs> could you tell by my tone? <laughs> Lightning line out from the clearance. Nearly Ives Campion does well. Roland for Scarrett, distributing again in that midfield position and managing to find Bo Westcombe Evans. Got a brace of tries against Tigers in December. Then it's there with Nelson popping up at first receiver. Then Roland almost in a 13 role. She's played for country. Then it's the late arrival of Trevathan. Record appearance holder, a 91st Luffer Lightning appearance, but timing of the hit and the pressure on Davy was strong. Evie Gallagher there, wasn't she? Perfect time and back rows. If you're looking at how you can cause that breakdown to become a mess, look at what Evie Gallagher did there, you know, the timing of it. And as a nine, it is so frustrating because you think you've got all the time in the world and then just a, a little nudge. She's feeling every moment like frustrated, isn't she, Megan Davy? Started every game at nine this season. Yeah, I mean, to carry, isn't it, Kate? Kate it's good work by there, and it's just that lift, isn't it? Good work by the clearers, but referee's happy that he's lifted the ball. Once that ball's lifted, nine's off fair game. Just the handling error under pressure. Bevan. Ball ricochets back to 
choice butchers. There is a big Francis. pressure coming through Christine Belial. They've gone for the midfield oh, no, dink over under that advantage. No advantage, come back. Decent scrum from the Bears. Yeah. Really good scrum, wasn't it? I think it was semi Pam, don't get me wrong, it's not my area of specialty, but she looked nice, she looked strong, she looked in really good physical condition there and had it got in and under her opposition. Atchison will take bears. Just stop past that yeah, tunnel tonight. Yeah, you can just see they can just see the angle, can't you? Simi Pam is nice and straight there, and she's got right under Christine Bilal. Look nice and strong, don't the Bears there? Yeah, destruction, destructive work from Simi Pam, and we've certainly seen that. The Bears have been missing a bit of that while she's been out. Pick there from Evie Gallagher. Gallagher still managing to stay on her feet, allow the troops to get behind her and push on. Ward ends up playing link player, and then the miss pass to find Varley. Varley's been in such great form over the course of the season, earning the call up. Dave Ward talking about it being a really great opportunity for her five tries in ten games this season. Bevan, slow ball. We're under penalty advantage. Nine. Just starting to see the power and that com combination of indiscipline where Lightning are concerned. It's just allowing Bristol Bears the opportunity to get upfield. We haven't really been looking too far left yeah. over the course of the first 11, 12 here, minutes, but now yeah. they're starting to really tiptoe into Lightning territory. This is lovely as well, because that is three forwards across the middle there that put Meg Varley away. Abby Ward, again, first receiver. She's just really smart as well, stays away from her touchline, gets the ball inside and just allows Bristol to rebuild to go again. A yeah, lovely support line from Skeld, and this is Marston Mulhern taking names Tackle through off. the middle. Tackle called, gets the ball to ground. Reverse ball from Bevan, on for Skeldon. And now the offload, looking for Varley to try and finish it. Bevan gets the call to the right from Aitchison. Bears building nicely into the 22, five metres out now. Nelson manages to get hands on the ball to try and bring it back on the Loughborough Lightning side, but it is still there with the home side. Best that Bears have looked. Pam looking to just power through. Bevan claps oh, the hands, wants it quickly. Oh, and there will be a penalty advantage being played against the player on the floor. Gallagher goes in to help secure Still possession. The Bevan, there's Reed, looks to throw the long one, looks to try and find Varley. Really good defence, right on the outside. Helena Rowland putting in the shot, but they were already going back for the penalty. Alarm bells ringing for Lightning. Yeah, and this is where Bristol come to life, you know. We said they may be overplayed in that opening five, six minutes, but when they're in your 22, they are so dangerous, you know. The passing ability of Amber Reed, of Holly H's, and just to whip that ball out, it, it's lovely to watch. And we've got a re we're very fortunate to be here up high, so we can see the shape that they're holding. Just got a momentary pause while McVarley gets back to her feet. It's taken okay, a bit of a knock. Time, Tom. Hey, fifth most line breaks and run metres in Allianz Premiership Women's Rugby this season. 15 line breaks all in all. And uh, Aitchison wants to offer the forwards this platform. Skeldon for Ward. Oh! Abby Ward, most line out steals in the league. Out, Joyce out, Butcher's out. most line out takes, including four steals. They've got this line out into the mall. 
can they get the go oh, forward they want? Skeldon with it under her, under her mitts, loses the ball. Sorry, We've got another penalty. Oh. Let's just listen Sorry, in, it might be words here for Rachel Malcolm. Two penalties down here now, have a chat please. Rachel Malcolm was momentarily celebrating, yeah. I think the fact right, girls, that let's Ferris go. had let's go. spilled it. Girls, let's go, please. Let's go. It's turned into a disciplinary chat on the purple side. Okay. Five up and down, nothing else. In from Skeldon. They've engaged them all. This is a little cleaner this time. Driving towards that line, you can see the ball is with the Scottish hooker. Loughborough Lightning able to just target the ball as it came to the front there. Simi Pan dives for the line. Straight into the starting lineup for her third appearance of the season. And Simi Pan opens the scoring for Bristol Bears. Just what the doctor ordered. You've been waiting to say that all evening, haven't you? I mean, it, for me, this is the difference between why there is nine points between this side and Loughborough. You know, when Bristol are getting opportunities, when they're getting into the 22, they are converting and just really good. I think Loughborough have done a really good work here. It looked like they've reset and then because Bristol are all on the same page, there's good connection. Abby Ward, again, as you've said, in the middle of it. And Simi Pam just has an easy fall over the line. But for me, it's all about the build of that mall. The ball is protected. Bristol are always in control and they know what they're doing with it. Decent nudge from Amber Reid as well. Conversion made from out wide. Bristol bears seven. Not for lightning now. Yeah, you just look at it again, isn't it? Look like we said, Luffer have done well, it's gone to floor, and it's just really small. If you know where the ball is, it's half the battle in the mall, and I think for me, that's what Bristol have done very, very well. They've kept under control, kept the ball safe. Luffer can't do anything about it. Jenny Hesketh has recently uh, Meg Varley has had to make way. Well. Tackle! Not too serious given her <coughs> invitation into that Scotland squad with the Women's Six Nations just four weeks away. But Hesketh has been on good form herself. Six successive starts in the back three through December and January. And invited into that Welsh training squad. Thank you. He captained England under 20s a couple of years ago, former England College's footballer. As Welsh caps in her sights. Lana goes over the top, finds Lana Skeldon. Bevan, she sets that nobody's at home for Loughborough Lightning, so the kick goes in. Renika Bonner is herring after it. She's going to be beaten to it by Emily Scarrett. Scarrett with a bit of time just to swing the right peg at it. Get a decent enough clearance up to the 22 yeah. under pressure. I think he's perhaps know. asking the question if it was touched on its way. Front, yeah. Just it's on your front, please, on your front. front. Drop off, Loughborough. This is such a smart decision oh, yeah. by Kira Beveren, you know. Line break, the new that uh, Helen Nelson in this case is out wide because Loughborough were attacking just to put the pressure on. Uh, Loughborough, and it's something that we just haven't seen from Bristol. Oh, on, just just knock on the tackle. Line out with Skeldon running around the back to re-receive it. And then it's Delaney Burns. Okay. Going the ball no, ripped come back. in the tackle. Just, uh, just a knock on the tackle. Inside the 22, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And again, having to do the defending, though, in their 22 as Bristol have the scrum. Okay, we come. Bristol, let's go. Bit of a swing of momentum, hasn't it, as well? You know, opening 10 minutes was all Loughborough, all Campton side, Bristol's half. 
the second ten of the first half, we've seen Bristol come to life now. And I think really smart with some of their decision making. They've exited a little bit with their kicking game. That kick that we just saw from Kira Barron, really smart. And it's just taken a bit of a sting out of Loughborough. Right. Bye. Board. Bottom left of your picture. Set. Seven months ago, baby Halley came into the world. Watches on as his wife now plays in the Francis. second row. Crystal Bears co-captain. Attempted little kick through. No, Scarrett dived to the floor like a goalkeeper to try and stop that one getting through. That would have been part of our return to play, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure she's got those skills in the locker. Yeah. Whiplash. She did say it when I was chatting to her in the week about some of the things she's done. So she's been to a trampoline park, she's dived into a foam pit, all those things that just start to test that whiplash, that neck strength that she's been doing a lot of work on. If anyone who doesn't know, I mean, obviously we've talked a lot about Emily's return, but she, uh, I mean, it's almost as if they basically laser printed a vertebra and put that into her neck, isn't it? I mean, they, they opened it up from the front, moved a windpipe aside, got in and popped it in. I mean, it's extraordinary. Um, and Nathan Smith this week, well, he was saying, you know, for everything that she has achieved in the game, it is remarkable to see the work she's put in over the last 13 months. She's got unfinished business in the game, perhaps that loss at the Rugby World Cup final in New Zealand, knowing, of course, that there's a home Rugby World Cup in England next August in 2025. All of these things ticking away in the mind of a fierce competitor such as Scarrett, and it's driven her to be back out here in Bristol on a rainy Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> just, imagine, just how she imagined it, I'm sure. <laughs> Definitely. She does like slidey weather, though. Bevan for Reed. Marston Mulhern right on the shoulder. Helena Rowland stayed in the fight to bring down the big Bristol number eight. Oh, Renika Bonner shrugging off the tackles. That was decent in terms of making a few metres forwards when it had momentarily lost momentum. Stay flat, stay flat. Another hit from Hibbert Jones. Just lost possession over the feet to Marston Mulhern and then thought she'd kick it away and ended up finding the face of Catherine Treader. <laughs> You're feeling that one in the morning. Uh, <laughs> you will, but I mean, she's, she's carrying so well for Bristol, back. isn't she? You know, we've seen her a couple of times from this line out here. Amber Reid, <laughs> it's just the way she drops her height, you know. They are. Daisy Hibber Jones, Helena Rowland are good defensive players, and the way she just bumps them out the way again, looking for work here. This one doesn't come off, and like you say, Cass and Treader gets that in the in the chops. But yeah, I think she's she started the game very brightly for Bristol. She might raise an eyebrow to uh, Kira Bevan for that one, mightn't she? But yeah, top of the carries for the league, 135 Bye. all in all, most offloads as well. She has Set. pulled on the Red Roses oh. shirt back in 2019, still just 25 years of age. This is the Loughborough Lightning scrum under all sorts of pressure. Scarrett coming in on the inside. Oh, and finding a good line as well. Gets the offload to send Loughborough Lightning upfield. It's a good it's arc of off. change of the angle from Scarrett to come in. And now a little dink across from Rowland. Hesketh under pressure. Tiptoes out of the 22, but just finds a combination of Rowland and Nelson. Keen to hold her up, keen to force them all here and get a turnover in possession, which they will. Gets a round of applause from the Loughborough Lightning coaching box just down below us. Strong defence from the visitors. Good isolation. Well, a little half smile on the face of Rachel Malcolm to encourage her team. That's more like it. And again, we just saw Kira Bevan do for Bristol, but the value of your nines being, in, being able to kick. Player coming forward, playing come back, and you've got three Lightning shirts around there. I think it's Helen Nelson gets her first, gets under the ball, and once she's under the ball, it's going to be really, really hard for Jenny Hesketh to get to ground. And as the rule is, once that referee calls more, enough forget the turnover. But again, really smart by Megan Davy, and just shows the value of kicking nines now into those corners can cause players a lot of problems. Seventh season with Loughborough Lightning now, Megan Davy. Bristol tried to have a real say at the last lightning scrum. They're certainly going to want to again here. 
Scarborough have to stay in the fight. In fact, Simi Pam's just lost her bind, so it's going to give this opportunity. Scarrett on the run around. Chance to launch the big one out to the left, which he manages to do, finding West Evans, who was well tracked. Lovibond doing the defensive duties at fullback. But it's Hibbert Jones. Francis. Amber Reed's just getting involved in a little bit of afters with uh, Rachel Malcolm. Helena Rowland looking at the options and starts to run around to the left. Just chipped it forwards. There was the advantage being played. Bristol need to deal with this. Just about managed to, but a um, bit of a mess all round, really. Yeah, it wasn't the, the cleanest, shall we say. Nice. Oh. Getting this momentum swing, getting Loughborough getting a little bit more territory, a bit more possession in Bristol's 22. Yes, sir. First penalty that Bristol Bears have conceded. Helen Nelson doing the job. 50th appearance for Loughborough Lightning. For Nelson. 55 caps oh. for Scotland. Gives seven Hannah inside seven. this position. Seven fingers, get out. Seven, get out. Eva Gallagher's told to get on her bike and get out of here. It's Catherine Trenner, USA International. They will talk this week about being wary of the threat of the Alaskan native. Okay, so use it now. This isn't going Three forwards seven. at the minute, so Davy's going to have to use it. Scarrett is the dummy run. Just popping up in midfield. It was there for Bulo Matai Tonga. He got really close to the line here. Then the arrival and the score. Halle Talfo managing to get over the line. Super work from Loughborough Lightning. Yeah, that, that's it. Biting back solidly. Patience in the build up, sending the dummy runners. And it was easy in the end for the USA Eagle. Really was, wasn't it? You know, Emily Scarrett again. But for me, it's this carry here by Blue Matagaya. So she just keeps fighting, doesn't she? She should have been stopped at that five. And then it's a really easy try from that, a really easy finish. But it's all in that original carry here. So you're driving her legs. You think she's going to be stopped there. Keeps going, keeps going. And she's just short. So by the time those forwards get around the corner, it's a really easy finish. And it's the value of your backs taking a bit of work out of the forward, especially from line out, especially from driver malls, is, is huge. Yeah, combination of Matai Tonga and uh, Tao Foto. It's going to be something that uh, puts a smile on the face of Sione Fuka Fuka, new USA head coach, former assistant for the Wallaroos. Pacific Four campaign will. Uh, get going for the Eagles against Canada at the end of April. Yeah, just at right. the tail end of the Women's yeah. Six Nations. No, no, no. Right. Oh, Time it. Seven points yeah, apiece then. We start not taken. Nelson. Walks it away as best she can. Hesketh was well positioned. Just dodges around the first pack of waiting African violet shirts. It's the official colour, by the way, of Black uh, Lightning. Pam looks to just link it on. Solidly ripped as well by Scantlebury. Ball then got onto the floor, and then goes into touch. Not for lightning, but have the scrum again. Another little scrappy moment, but resulting in a Loughborough lightning uh, lineup. Numbers five. It is a little bit special, especially on the edges, isn't it? When the ball's on the ground, you know the wingers are getting really stuck into. It. We're getting to see a really good battle there. Steel seven over the course of the season will make it eight now. Start to peel around in field. 
Marston Marley making herself the target. Okay. The referee has put his left hand in his pocket here. Katie Trevallon is going to spend ten minutes in the sin bin. Referee's seen enough in terms of Loughborough Lightning and their inability to defend that ball. Hear the referee there say two more offences, two at side entry. Loughborough Lightning go down to 14. Yeah, it's a big one to lose as well from your front row as well. Because as soon as the next scrum happens, you're going to have to take a bit a back row off as well to replace a front row. So interesting that Bristol have still gone to the line out. Wondered whether they would have gone to a scrum there. Skeldon. Go to the front. Joyce Butchers rising high. Another player on the floor, Hibbert Jones, responsible for being the speed bump that brought it down. Scarrett gathers the dink through from Reed. Eight Treading very delicately here, Loughborough Lightning. Yeah, I think they really are. It wouldn't have surprised me if he had gone to his pocket there. Eight you know, in class. 22, we know how dominant Bristol have been in this line out. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be important now that Loughborough are very very clean and make sure that they follow kind of the Bristol. rules. for Bristol to add oh! a second try. Keep up! Got their noses in front. Keep up! Only for Loughborough Lightning to bite back, but can they get another? Skeldon has it, driving towards the line. Oh. Try number two for Bristol Bears. Fifth try of the season for Lana Skeldon. Well, Bristol Bears know how effective their maul can be. Hence the tries that that lady has picked up. That'll do. Yeah, it's that lady again, isn't it? Abby Ward, we've just seen a steal. But I think for me, the thing that's really interesting is that Bristol scored 27 of their 46 tries from line out, so they know this is going to happen. And from Loughborough's point of view, like I was saying, maybe not so eloquently, it was, they ha it's really difficult because this, once it's set, not to give a penalty away, and that's what they couldn't afford to do. And I think for me, I think Loughborough will probably be pretty happy that they just take five points from this and they get out of their 22. Well, Loughborough Lightning going down to 14 players, conceding the points. Um, might be an interesting time to catch up with Lauren Jenkins, who's alongside Loughborough Lightning head coach Nathan Smith. Lauren, all yours. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Nathan, after finding a way to wrestle back momentum in this game, how disappointed, firstly, to concede a penalty there and then be another victim of them all? Yeah, yeah. Um, we've probably just not been as clinical as we'd like to be in, in their half and they've taken their opportunities set-piece wise, um, which we were fully expecting. But I'm pretty pleased with um, how we've played so far. We just feel like we've got a couple of gears to go. It's just a bit disappointing, the wet ball. It's not, it's not as fast a game as I'd hoped, but... Um, yeah, we're still in it. Did you have a plan pre-match for you know, how many minutes Garrett's going to play in this, controlling the game time? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a plan, obviously, for, for Scars just around her injury, but uh, she needs to play well to stay on as well, so she's doing all right at the moment. 46-17 when these two teams met early in the season. Does today, to an extent, Nathan, serve as a benchmark to compare where you are now compared to them? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. We were pretty poor last time we played them, um, and we're, we're a bit better today, um, so yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to see how this half goes. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Lauren. Interesting to hear from Nathan Smith and the fact that he was hoping it would be dry. I hope it would be a quicker track for Loughborough Lightning speedsters to get going. We just conceded another penalty. That's 7-1 now against the visitors. Oh. Gonna have to get that turned around. More time again from Bristol Bears. Lana Skeldon has it. They're gonna have to go an awfully long way if they're gonna get anywhere close to the line. But they also know they could be dragging more penalties out of Loughborough Lightning. Look at this. 
started around the halfway mark and there is going to be another penalty with side entry so Bevan plays it away Aitchison Reed on the wraparound support on the outside Heskett will ship it on looking for Bonner Bonner on the outside stepping in Scarra looks to make the tackle Joyce Butchers tackle by Talfa Oak The crowd get the volume up. Master Mulhern still under this advantage, you'd assume. Aitchison back for Reed. Then the direct running of Elian Clark. Aitchison again on for Hesketh. Tackle in from Rowland. Abby Ward, oh, the little inside ball, and then it comes back to Ward. Ward for the try line. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, who needs scintillating back play when the forwards come pop balls to each other like that and drive towards the line? Abby Ward with Bristol Bears third of the match. I mean, it's a, it's a great try, isn't it? It's Bristol at their best. You know, the things that we've come to love and know about Bristol, you've got to see all of it. The handling from the back line here, Amber Reed running square, and these three passes here at the line, committing defenders. It's rugby basics, it's perfect. You think Emily Scarrett's maybe got a hold up here, but she hasn't, and then we see this lady again, Amber Reed, and what a carry from Evelyn Clark there. Really dominant, really positive, and then we know that from there it just leads into Abby Ward getting, the, I suppose, the easier part of the game and just getting touched and down over the line. See her here, too little involvement, and it's it's just lovely to watch, isn't it? Because once you're in behind, it's really hard to defend. And here, a little touch, and then she follows the ball. And I've got to admit, I do really, really enjoy watching Bristol play. Unless it's against Sale. <laughs> I don't know how much Abby Ward knew that ball was coming back to her. She was certainly ready. Okay, let's go. She has started nine out of ten of the... Premiership Women's Rugby matches this season. Scored against Leicester, well, she's got one against Rafa Lightning as well. 19-7 now, and they're beginning to open up a little bit of daylight. And it's Master Mulhern, another one of those Tackle! characteristic carries. They've got players to the left here, they might have numbers as well. Delaney Burns out for Bevan. It's worked nicely. Hesketh, oh, ball back in field, it was meant for Bevan. It was nearly sublime from the Bears. They were carving open Loughborough Lightning down this short side had it gone to hand, but is it going to create an opportunity for Loughborough Lightning to strike back? Rowland oh, was looking for that slightly wider pass, perhaps the bounce pass. Just guilty of forcing it a little bit. And I think that's really important from enough for now that they don't they're only two scores behind it's only half time they've got plenty plenty of time so they just need to settle they need to get hold of the ball they need to get a bit more territory but they definitely don't need to force it and you know you're looking at this lady here on your screen Helena Rowland she is a phenomenal player but probably in that instance could have just hit Emily Scarrett I appreciate her we are enjoying Premiership Women's Rugby action this evening. There is, of course, the new look HSBC Sevens tournament. Currently live over on TNT4, where 12 of the world's top men's and women's sevens teams are in action for a weekend filled of adrenaline pumping rugby. The women's take centre stage first of all. And uh, well, if you've an eye on whether Antoine Dupont has got the business in the shorter form of the game, well, I think they'll be out a little bit later, perhaps about half past 10 UK time from memory. And then next weekend. Premiership Women's Rugby starts with Gloucester Hartbury against Exeter. Live match there. 2.45, that one. And we also have them on Sunday, TNT Sports 1. Luck Lightning against Katie Daly McLean's Sales Shark side. That one is 2.30 on TNT 1. Streaming as well on Discovery Plus. Superpower weekend. Plenty to enjoy about that next week as Bristol look to try and find the width. Up the thing. 
Beckham. Tackle! Wales, England, half back combination, and then Aitchison feeds it on to Simi Pam. They go the same way. Reed then just shuffling back in a sort of passive line behind Aitchison. Ready if called upon. Penalty goes the way of Loughborough Lightning. How they needed that. Just to stop the momentum of the Bears, which has really seen the home side with their tails up really since the yellow card. Yeah, it's huge, isn't it, for Loughborough there. You know, Bristol again falling into their shape, moving that ball effortlessly. So really, really good, ter good turnover out in the wide channels. Just gives Loughborough an opportunity to relieve a bit of pressure and hopefully build a bit of momentum. Watch it here again, just to just move it so well. But it's a good initial tackle there, and then both back on your feet. And as soon as hands are on the ball, it's a it's a really good turnover by uh, Liv Ives Campion. Last 90 seconds of the first half. Ball comes down from Ives Campion into midfield for Sadia Kabea. Davy. Now for Roland. Roland looking to just try and use that injection of pace through the gap. Davy. Hibbert Jones. Matai Tonga looking at the options available to her, but Carey seemed to be the best suggestion as Helen Nelson just looked. Scarrett was eyeing up a goal on the outside to run through. Davy. This is better continuity from Loughborough Lightning, although the solid tackle. Doing a job. Gallagher, though, coming around and it's in at the side. So, with the clock in the final minute of the half, wonder what the thought will be here. Do they what, try and just reduce the deficit? You can call, just go for it. Just, play this on, yeah. just Let's just get the game going. The number four will tell me when it's time for that to come back on. Silent truth. Loughborough Lightning are just trying to measure up whether it makes a difference as to when the yellow card is over. They've opted to look for the corner, and that is a really good nudge into the corner as well. It's great. I think that's really hard for Loughborough, you know. That affects their decision-making, and referees basically not giving them anything in that instance. So, good decision, great kick by Helena Rowlands there. Now an opportunity to go and kind of get some points on the board. Got to get things right at line-out time. And they go to the tail to Malcolm, who brings it down. Kabea getting in there and getting on the ball as well. Being assisted along by Trenner and Scarlett's joined the back as well. Round the corner it comes, the ball down. Sadia Kabea at the base. It's Loughborough Lightning's second try. Couldn't have come at a better time with half-time beckoning. Birthday yesterday. Try scorer today. Yeah, it's everything Loughborough needed there, wasn't it? Just before half time, you know, we thought Bristol had got a lot of momentum there. They were in control, and actually, a couple of penalties, yellow card returns, and it's just good patience from Loughborough, you know. Like we've talked about, once that ball's at the back and it's safe, Loughborough got a little shift, they got a little tilt up onto that left hand side, and it could finish from Sergio Cabello at the back, controlling that mall. Then for Roland, who gave them that position, a brilliant penalty kick into the corner. To take this down to a five point gap. Oh, denied by the left hand upright. Our referee Mike Hudson blows the half time whistle then. Well, certainly that try will give plenty for us to enjoy over the course of the second half. And in a game where we've Enjoy the return of one Emily Scarrett. She's had a couple of vintage-style touches that show that she is already back on the greatest stage. One change then for Bristol Bears, and it is in the form of Anna Butterman. On screen. And in a bench roll, a little bit of impact alongside Holly Phillips. Seven points between the two sides. Lupra Lightning back up to their full complement. Okay, 
Holly Aitchison gets the second half underway. Inside. Helen Nelson. Right footed, sends it away, but it's going to be the stuttered run of Hesketh to come back into the pile of bodies. Trevard in the first one there, who was one of those who played ten minutes less than everybody else in that first half. Devon chipping it on, Master Mulhern protects it. Oh, and that's a perfect floated ball for Hibbert Jones to get a hold of. Scarrett, big right to left pass, looking to try and create more room for Westcombe Evans. It's just gone forwards in the transfer. It's a big pass here, and what a, a read by Daisy Hibber Jones there. She's come out the line, just got in between it, and it's a great hand because great hands because that ball is dipping on that wet, wet slippery surface. And you see Emily Scarrett again. Nice little link play, good wing end, 10, trying to stay away from that touchline, but ball's just a bit loose there, a bit bobbly. Bevan waits. Some contract extension last year. Looking forward to getting that Women's Six Nations campaign underway to earn her 58th cap for Wales. Amber Reid. They have the 12 on her back, Amber Reid, but very much been playing at a first receiver position. She was 10 against Leicester a few weeks ago. Holly Aitchison just slipping into that 12 role as well. Tackle. Almost opposite fellow Red Rose Scarrett. Flung back Bruce by Bevan for stop Reed. Stop. Rowland does love to run, does love to get going. And this is Helena Rowland. Lovely stepping, nearly stepped herself to the floor, but up to the 22 wow. is brilliant from the Red Rose fly one's half. One's and it's on Trevathan. Then shipping it away, Scarrett riding the tackle of Joyce Butchers. Then it's there for Belial, the Scottish prop. Takes it forward to clear out decent as well, but the pass just a little low for everybody to take. Hibbert Jones tidies it up and sends it on for Cabea. Bristol get in for the turnover, and it's strong work from Hannah Butterman, who roars to the Bristol skies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's where she's so, so dangerous, Hannah Butterman. But I think we, we you know, you, the way she plays, she's so powerful, she's so yeah. difficult to move once she gets in that low position and very, very good over the ball. What about the break, though? I mean, Helena Rowland at her best, isn't it? You know, looks like nothing's on, gets ahead of, and then basically just gets moving, and she's so, so good at that, even though he trips herself up. But good last man tackle from Holly, and there you see. It's just how strong she is, but for here, when you're losing that collision, you're going backwards, it's so easy for the likes of Botman to get over that ball. Reed plays wide for Merrill Smith. Didn't see tons of Smith in the first half as Bevan plays on again. Reed missed pass. Nice joining of the line from Lovebond. First game of 2024 for Ella Lovebond. And Hibbert Jones has got in for the turnover. Nelson's there. Cabea got the call out the back from Roland. It's Roland looking to try and get on her skates again. Davy fired back for Nelson, so off on the fly half for Loughborough Lightning, but perhaps it's just a little flat footed there. Another turnover. Nelson got herself isolated. Amber Reed. She's been third in the breakdown steals over the course of the season. Eight before we came into this one. She's got another. Yeah, she's another one that's so, so good over the ball. You see this from, from Daisy but Jones. Great work, great technique, low. So difficult to move. And then almost like anything you can do, I can do as well. Pulls the tackler, really locks on it. And for me, I think that's the biggest improvement in the women's game. We're seeing so many more competent jacklers over the ball. More. 
was a Rugby World Cup winner, Katie Daly with Lee Willis as Abby Ward takes this down, shipping it back for the forwards to do the business to try and get in at the corner. It's under the mitts of Lana Skeldon again, already one try in the first half, and the referee happy enough, she's got another. Sixth try of the season, and Skeldon gets Bristol Bears up to 24. Bonus point secured. It's Bristol. I take part of what they do, isn't it? You know, we talk about this wide, expansive, beautiful game that they play, but when they need to, they're forwards and how they come alive in that line out, you know. Great kick. It's just so well formed again, you know. Good protection, ball transferred. Lana Skeldon has almost got a little bit of an armchair there, and Campion's done really well to get involved, but they just can't stop the momentum. They can't get underneath the ball and you know, it makes Bristol so dangerous that when they get five metres out, it's very, very difficult to stop that. And evening's work will be done for Lana Skeldon. <laughs> it's a low drill from Amber Reid. 57% accuracy coming into tonight's game, but she has no problem that she can nail them from that sort of range. Bears up to 26. And it's not a lot Loughborough can do about this in this example. You know, they're going backwards, can't stop the ball because Bristol have done a very, very good job of protecting it. It could be a tough night if Loughborough keep giving possession, and that's the biggest thing. They've got to make Bristol play high. They've got to get them back in their 22 and not let Bristol get into this Loughborough half. Hesketh. Change made for Bristol. Lucy Burgess is onto the field. Just a little knock-on in midfield. We'll present Loughborough Lightning with a bit of a gift. Bristol's fourth handling error. And Carmela Morale is coming on, and, well, it finally will be the number up for Emily Scarrow. Go this side, go this side, just get your heads, shoulders above your hips. Right, we're just going to get down like that. Get closer. She will be pretty pleased with those 47 minutes, Katie Dillon-McLean. Massively. I mean, I know and Emily Scarrett will probably be loads of things she'll be disappointed with. But in terms of everybody else watching and looking on, you know, she didn't look like a player that's been out of the game for 13 months at a position like we've talked about. She's probably played maybe once or twice. Yeah, I think it's a... Position. Just check that your mic's working. Set. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm back. No, you're back. Good. Didn't want to have to Hold do. On. Didn't want to have to do this all on my own. <laughs> Davy away to the right. Nelson in support. Davy does a really good oh, sorry, dart nice. out there. Pivot Jones gets and protects. They're going to need someone to play it away, which it is now. Lily Ives Campion being accompanied by Tal Fotto, the try scorer in the first half. Three meters out now. Bristol Bears try and spoil, but Hibbert Jones. Davy for England in October. Well, Sadia Cabea was out injured, but it's Cabea who's on the ball now. And who will drive? And Cabea looking for the line. Held up by Ward and Bottoman. There was a penalty advantage. One Bristol offside and on. It's gone against Bottoman. I do enjoy Hannah Bottoman's facials to tell you everything you need to Step know. Five. You're not left in doubt, are you? Yes, the five. Step off. Yes, step off. There you go. Good opportunity, this. For Loughborough Lightning to try and hit back straight away to the tail and Whoa. Rachel Malcolm. Cabea latches on. We seven. saw this right towards That's the end of the first half, inside. but look at the counter drive from the Bears. It's really solid and. Hannah Bottoman right there at the back, looking to try and hold it all in place. But now penalty advantage to play with. They start to flood around to the right, but the ref's not going to have them play that. Three flirted with the left pocket. Any more? 
Yeah. Abby Ward will be given the chance to remind her team of their discipline. Yes. The Lightning are very much on the wrong side of that statistic, certainly after the first half, okay. but they are asking questions of Bristol in this area. And quite rightly, the referee has warned the home side. So, Helena Rowland will ask the forwards to do more of the same. It's huge here for Loughborough. You know, they've got to take some points out of this, especially with Bristol on that penalty warning. You know, could get a yellow card, but they've got to make sure they do their basics well here. 23 out of their 34 tries from line out before tonight's fixture. Oh, that was not straight. Rachel Malcolm knew it as well. She didn't even need to look to the referee to check the decision. Another critical time. Catherine Treader cuts a forlorn figure. Score option, yeah, Those are the moments when you're playing this level, these top end sides that you've got to get right because, as we know, Bristol will make you pay if they get into your half here. Looks like she wasn't sure of the call. Looked like it was going in, had a little bit of that dummy throw, and then all after that, kind of all process had gone. There are many moving parts in the lineup. Not all the blame will, of course, be uh, attributed to the throw from Treader. It looked like she wasn't sure when the call was coming, had to wait a while to get it in. Crunch! Pursuing her rugby career, incidentally, Catherine Treader. She's got nine brothers and sisters. That must uh, tug on the heartstrings a little bit. Penalty Bristol. Marston Mulham. Handed on for Holly Aitchison. It's a third scrum penalty to the home side. Periods where Love for Lightning have dealt with it. Looked okay on their own ball, but they certainly no took that one. No it's tough, isn't it, as well? If you're not going straight to the line now and then you get in a scrum where you're in difficulty, your set piece has to function. Loughborough, I think, if you're not rating about 78% cumulative their set piece. So a big ask against the Bears that rock at about 85%. That's one side. Well, played away, Reed. He's got a lot of time on that. And this is going to fall for Nelson, who couldn't hold it. Could ill afford that error. Just easy yards, easy meters for Bristol Bears. Helen Nelson is a better rugby player than that. Yeah, she'll be really, really frustrated. But it's really important now that Loughborough reset. You know, you've gone penalty, you've uh, gone error at line out, followed by yeah, knock on. Rachel, this is where you've got to be able to, as a team, is to pull together, go back to your basics and make sure that your next actions are positive because otherwise, some like, a team like Bristol will just keep marching you back. Okay. Yeah. Crouch! Lucy Burgess. Going to step back from playing Katie Trevathan, but uh, staying on as the Bucks women's lead and head coach of the Loughborough Uni women's team. Still doing a job for them in the front row. Crouch! On Lillian Clark. In that Scotland training squad. Set! Thomas Sterling County oh, and Edinburgh University. In from Burgess, being watched by Davy. Switch play and continuation of the run around from Reed. Good eyeing up and awareness of it. And the hit from Scantlebury. Shutting down Bristol in that wide channel. Marston Mulhern. And look to try and give them more of the go forward. Burgess will come back down the short side from Gallagher. Not the easiest one to take from Lovibond. Well, a bit of inaccuracy from Bristol Bears. Wonder what uh, Tom Luke makes of it. Bristol Bears assistant coach is with Lauren Jenkins. Thanks, Nick. Tom, having been trapped in your own 22 for a period there on a warning, a, a bit of relief to get yourselves out of trouble? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think um, sort of Loughborough's main source of points is their, is their driving line out. So 
the longer you can stay outside your 22, the greater chance you've got of, um, of not conceding against them. So yeah, um, exiting has definitely been a focus for us this week and um, we've done it pretty well for the most part, but yeah, we probably could do with uh, being a little bit more accurate there. They were the team that went in on half-time with a boost of having just scored. Uh, how key was it that you were the team coming out and the first to get points on the board? And what, like, what was said in that? Yeah, I think we were actually in a really good um, period of the game just before they scored, before half-time. So probably the message at half-time was, yeah, they scored. They didn't have a big period of pressure to create the score. It was a real soft score from us. It was a silly penalty in the middle of the field and then they drove it over. So it was actually just carry on the momentum that we had before that into the second half and try and impose ourselves again. Tom, thanks for your time. Thank you, Lauren. Good to hear from Tom Luke. Bristol with another penalty, driving into that Loughborough half. Already got the fourth try and the bonus point. Amber Reid slotting three out of the four conversions. Got the chips in as well, it's a cold night. Make sure you've got yourself your sustenance. <laughs> Another one that goes not straight, but it's Bristol Bears this time who make the error. Mark Atkin Davis, replacement on for Lana Skeldon. Named in that 2023 World Rugby Dream Team 15, last season's top try scorer with 23 tries. 50th England Cup in September. She will be uh, looking forward to the Guinness Women's Six Nations campaign starting in a few weeks. A couple of rounds of Premiership Women's Rugby to enjoy before that. Nicely taken down by Ives Campion. No, Emma Wassel. The Loughborough Lightning at the minute, just uh, out with injury. Bit of work for a place with Jess Weaver to uh, go in and get that ball as well. In fact, Lightning are going to get a penalty from it. Yeah, they've had some couple of momentum swingers, haven't they? We've had a big, big tackle on that right hand side and now penalty that line out, which is huge, you know. It's really important that Loughborough take the next set of points on offer here. What they can't do is let that score get built away. You know, two scores, you're still in that game, and especially with the way the likes of Helena Rowland are kicking. They know how dominant they are at line out. Just got to build themselves back into Bristol's 22, and if they get an opportunity, take it. And this this is one of those hits I've just mentioned there. It is a great shot, isn't it? Perfectly timed. It just takes all momentum out of Bristol Bears' attack. That's another bit of miscommunication at the line-out because that one was a long throw no one was expecting and Lark Atkin Davis was able to tidy up. Oh, did that go forwards? It just did. Just asked a little bit much. Amber Reid. Um, a team's made a number of subs how that changes the dynamic. You could probably argue that both teams have kind of lost their flow. You see, in this instance here, probably Evie Gallagher just needs to turn and carry. Not necessarily sure. Amber Reid will thank her for that. That's falling at her toes. So, yeah, That's a both double teams, hamstring injury. It is for somebody of her age as well. <laughs> um, but no, I think both teams now just need to settle. You know, Bristol in the driving seat. It is on Loughborough to try and chase the game, but they've got to stay to their basics. It is Calcutta Cup weekend, of course, Sam Reid's uncle, Andy Reid, 18 cap Scotsman, British and Irish Lion. Five, six, Big weekend of international rugby alongside Premiership Women's Rugby as well. Big drive from the Bristol Pack, it is coming back on the Loughborough Lightning side, but looks like Bears momentarily were the first to react to it, but they are going to be given the chance to play. Rachel Malcolm had to juggle it from Weaver, now it's there. Cabea got the call to play it back. It's not the tidiest. Morale. Little ball back in field for Roland. Makes a few metres. In the footwork, Trevathan, that's better. Weaver. Morale. Oh, it was pretty easily read by Hannah Bottoman, but only managing to knock it on the replacement, Red Rose. So, does still. Need some room, Matai Tonga, Roland, a little wider now, Westcombe Evans, Reed with the tackle, 
right up to that far touchline as Upper Lightning go as wide as they can. Well, they look to do the same back this way. Roland ships it on. It's over and through Belial. And it's gone forwards. Yeah, that one's gone forward. And that's a player in front of the ball. It's going to be an offside. Second one's forward and then three offside. It's tough watching, isn't it, from a Love Pro perspective now. They kind of lose a little bit of their shape. It's going to be really important for the likes of Rachel Mac uh, Malcolm as their, the captain, yes, you know, uh, Helen Nelson, Helena Rowlands, to really uh, grab a hold of it. that game now and to really start yeah. making a decision about how they're going to play. Do they need to kick the ball a little bit more? Do they need to tighten up? Because at the moment, what they're doing is just getting them in more and more problems. So just down below us, See, uh, Loughborough Lightning, Bo Westcombe Evans being replaced by Karis Williams Morris. And I uh, can also see for Bristol, Phoebe Murray is just uh, warming up, making a few tackles. But it's Bristol coming forwards. Burgess is going to go back to the short side. Oh, but that's been lost forwards. Yeah! Big <laughs> shout, big cheer from Treader. Lightning with the scrum. Roger Malcolm has caught. Good way to get on the right side of the eye. Sorry, can you send a laugh or not, Tom? You've got blood here. Yeah. 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 Second half isn't quite catching yes, the light mate. as we might have hoped, Katie Daly McLean. It's not, if I'm honest. It's, uh, it's very stub start easy and very error strewn. Um, we said, like, our pitchers were being down their pitch side. It is slippery, so it will make the handling conditions. But interestingly, I think Bristol are probably dealing with it slightly better. Two scores ahead, you know, that score after the um, half time break was really important. And as you can see them there, they just kind of look a little bit more contained, a little bit more calm and a little bit more in control. It's really important for Loughborough in this next 20 minutes that they can find a way to try and challenge Bristol and, and to get in their half and to convert some points. In the meantime, the uh, stadium has gone for Simba Cam, if you're wondering why the strains of the circle of life are just uh, coming Mikey through your team. Blood. To oh, yeah, is from a clash of heads, okay. for which she is the tackler. Rachel Malcolm, I think, is going to have to get a bit of attention pitch side, but uh, Phoebe Murray comes onto the field as Aitchison makes way. Started the reverse yeah, Mike, I think we just need to look at nine. this. Starts, including the last couple against okay, Costa Harbury and the Chiefs. Foul play. Uh, foul play here. I think Nicky O'Donnell. Yeah, so, Mike, what I'm going to show you yes, is an upright tackle by Loughborough Six. Oh, so Rachel Malka has not only caught one here, but she may be under the watchful eye of TMO Nicky O'Donnell for a foul play dangerous tackle. Certainly, Rachel Malcolm's the one who's copped it, but... We're just going to show you the first point of contact, well. Mike. Oh, dear. Yeah, this is where they're going to go through their protocol now. Red card protocol and then work way down is their mitigation force. Um, referee will probably talk us through that, I would have thought. Whether the two players dipping into it... Mike, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, have we seen all the angles you've got now? Yeah, this is your best angle, the rear. Okay, so, do have so look for a six there. is upright, yeah. and it's a glancing. You've got glancing head contact. So yeah. So we have got we have got glancing head contact. Yes. Okay. Is it foul play? I think we've got an upright tackler. Just having a look at it a few times. Yeah. So just going to put it back in real yeah. speed for you, yeah, Mike. Certainly a dipping and a yeah. crouching of the legs into the contact, yeah, yeah. and then rising into what it's they've not, not, established as a glancing blow. Yeah, yeah. We will uh, pause once referee continues the conversation. Okay. That's all to. of your angles, Mike. Okay. All right. So I think we've got we've clearly got head contact, glancing head contact. We've got 
Uh, we have got foul play because she is upright, but it's not for me high danger. It's a glancing blow, um, so I'm with in yellow card here, no more. Okay, yeah. Yes, I agree. Wait, thank you. Um, is Rachel back on or has she been replaced? Okay, mate, can you just we come over? So because Rachel has gone off for manager. a blood injury replacement to get temporarily patched up, it's just it's going to be a yellow card. To come okay, across. so it's going to be a yellow card for six. Okay, so people are just going to not up at six. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So twenty off. Yeah, got it. So the replacement yeah, that have been made was uh, Tara Saboda, Canadian, returning for just her second match since the season opener, but she's going to have to wait to make that impact. Yeah. Ah, uh, balls on the mark. Balls on the mark. That's fine. So just get out ten, please. So. It's interesting, Casey Jackal, McLean, that ultimately head. you could be off for your blood replacement or rather to get your attention, but it's also a handy way of serving your yellow card once, yeah, albeit your team are down to 14. Yeah, I mean, the protections are still the same, aren't they? That Lafroy are down to 14, have got to defend in their 22, but yes, it's for Rachel same Markham, which is two for the price of one. <laughs> well, Bristol Bears then eyeing up a fifth try. Marston so well. Mohan. Look to try and go round the front. Okay. The Lightning were well positioned, but Abby Ward. Oh, look at her freeing the arms over the top. Wanted to be an option. Lucy Bird just wasn't quite there and ready for it. Marston Mulhern. Straight back One forwards away. again. No. Excellent commando rolling out the way from Trevathan. Bottoman. Nothing out of hands. Well, well. Elliot Clark is now having to uh, be involved to and wrestle this one back away, but it is coming back on the left and right side, or is it? Oh, it's been knocked on in the process of Clark trying to get hold of it, or certainly a couple of the Bristol players in there. Yeah. Evie Gallagher. 14 left, bro. 14 left, bro. Just a bit frantic, isn't it? A bit messy at the breakdown. Ultimately, for Loughborough, they need to get yes, out of their 22. Away. They need to exit. Bristol just keep heaping that pressure on them, force an yeah. error at the breakdown, making That's it very, very difficult. Well, Sarah Svoboda he is going to get a chance to uh, get onto the field. Chosen to make the change with Scantlebury coming off. A couple of good moments, particularly defensively, Alan Scantlebury Try. over on that right wing. Yes, yeah, solid, isn't it? Five. Really staying away from my touchline, which is for a winger, Set. really, really important, especially for hand and like you say, some really good defensive moments. Oh, huge oh, Bristol is. scrum. They've got the penalty advantage. Marston Mohan doesn't want to play it. She wants that straight arm penalty from the referee, and they get it. Read into the corner. 18 yes, minutes remain of the match. Bristol Bears okay. will know that right, one score from Loughborough Lightning could just change that momentum. They need this fifth try to just put that extra bit of daylight between themselves and Nathan Smith's side. Fourth against fifth in the table as they are. Mark Atkin Davis, Joyce Butchers. Then it's there for Gallagher. Tackle. Gallagher looking to try and get oh, yeah. away from Hibbert Jones. Marston Malhern. There's a penalty advantage against Belial. Atkin Davis looks to point the players that are offside. Do the referee's job for him. Oh, and then the dive over the top. Oh, the score is there from Gallagher. Evie Gallagher gets Bristol Bears fifth try. Been a key player. And a breakdown for them over the course of the season. And this time she's jumping over one to get the try. Bridget came for that scrum, but again, Bristol, the basics level from their forwards is very, very good. You know, good low body positions, and this time just a good identification of space from Evie Gallagher. Sergio Cabea, you can just see us looking away of Hannah Bottoman standing open, and that in behind space is just really easy for Evie Gallagher to salmon dive over. 
Another good conversion from Amber Reed. Makes it four out of five. And all of a sudden, 33 points to 12. Has a very strong look about it from a Bristol Bears perspective. Look at Brighton have, have had their opportunity. I think the, the difference in this game has been that once Bristol have entered 22, their completion rate has been significantly high. And I think from probably from a coaching point from Nathan Smith sitting there, I think when they look back on this game, it won't be for the lack of opportunity, it's just a lack of conversion. Perhaps a bit of a lack of composure, lack of collective understanding of the plan in midfield. That sort of 22 to 22 period has perhaps looked a little rudderless at times, but of course, when they played this reversed fixture, it was roughly like 17, Outside. Bristol Bears 46 at Franklin's Take Gardens in November. Well, scoreline is beginning to take on a similar looking field. <laughs> Certainly, the mission for Loughborough Lightning was to come here yeah. and really give a better account of themselves yeah. than they managed back then. Definitely going to be Dave Ward, who's the happier out, of the two head coaches Loughborough. at the minute. Loughborough, let's go, please. Yeah, and I think he's still probably frustrated with some of the errors these Bristol sides have made. But, you know, all credit to Bristol. They've played well, they've taken their opportunities. And, and like you say, Loughborough probably lost their way at times, a couple of line-ups in the 22 that haven't gone to hand. And, and ultimately, that's probably what's cost them. Maya Muller, the Swedish international, is on to the field. Sweden, of course, now coached by uh, an old mate of yours, Tamara Taylor. Oh, nice. Hello, Rugby World Cup winner. And it's Burgess. Yeah. But bottom. Oh. Bit of width Bristol's for Reed. Crossfield kick is looking for Rika, uh, Renika Bonner. Oh, and it's worked out well for Phoebe Murray. Who's got on to it? Oh. And they're not going to clear out any oh, of those defensive purple shirts. It's still there. Look at the meterage gain from that kick from Reed. Big pass. Lark Atkin Davis did well to take it. They got numbers out on the left, or they did have. Take and Burns is off to come back to the near side. Nelson having to come across and get hold of it. Inside the 22, but without much room to work in. Rock. Swatted away Bonnet. Sure. Yeah, for the first try score, a tough photo. For Loughborough Lightning. Oh, now it's Helena Rowland doing Helena Rowland things. Gets the offload away. Tough photo. How on earth well. did she hold on to that one? Yeah. Then it's there for Weaver. And away for Cabea. Not sure whether she's offloading or carrying into contact Cabea. But Bottoman goes in for the turnover. Cabea was never released. Goodness. Bristol coming 60 metres upfield. Lightning returning by 25. I mean, it, it, it's what we were hoping to see, you know. It just hasn't been all the time, but great team. Great play by both players there, you know. Helena Rowlands again with that break. We know what an elusive runner she is and you see her here like breaks the yeah, line so beats Abby Ward okay. but what a tap tackle He's this is by yet. Holly Cunningham absolutely full Point. stretch absolutely perfect and great little offload so and support from Helena Rowlands there's go go gadget second row arms eh yeah something I've never had Muller on the run around <laughs> 15 meter channel looking to come back in field Carry that time was for Catherine Wells joining Loughborough Lightning this season from Worcester. And then Abby De Good, ninth match of the season, having rejoined the club after an initial spell three, four years ago. Now the long ball looking for Svoboda, Canadian international. Oh, sorry, a little nice. like Scarrot. Not out for quite as long, but certainly Backwards. back in and looking to try and. Just manage some minutes, get some rugby under the belt. What oh, really lovely work from Abby to Good, using the footwork to step around as Bristol just tire momentarily. Cabale oh, wants it. Big hit from Marston Mulhern. So, so, a little late on Jess Weaver, but it's 
good continuity from Luck and Lightning as they try and get this ball away, try and keep it alive without Bristol Bay getting their clutches on it. Master Mulhern getting over the top, but it's another penalty going beyond the ball before getting hands on the ball. Offy. Hands on the ground. Good face play from the Lightning. Better, isn't it? Building a bit of uh, territory, a bit of possession. They still at times <laughs> look like they're not all on the same wavelength. But in that instant, you know, all you've got to do is keep a hold of the ball. This gives you an opportunity now to take some round, points as well. the backs. Lovely switch line with Matai Tonga. Made some decent metres. Need someone to pick it up and make a few more. Weaver, Hibbert Jones and Roland running around in support. And on Roland's made so much happen and in fact now it's turnover ball for Bristol Bears. And is there a chance for them to try and run it out? Oh, it's brilliant work to free the hands and set them away on the far side. Roland in the stop go is Hatchkiff. Haskett looks to come back in field. Cabea gets back. Bottom in there. A real duel there between Hesketh and Roland defensively. Now the crossfield kick from Merrill Smith. Renika Bonner's there. Can Bonner gather it? No, she can't. Lovely. Oh, we're having some fun now. Yes, mate. Lovely. Cheers. Lovely ball. Here. Oh, it's just a bit low, isn't it? But how well do Bristol transition here? And this is absolutely lovely. He draws both defenders, and you think she's going to go 90 metres, but fair play, Helena Rowlands does a really good job of not committing early, just buying herself time and allowing Sarge Kubea, the rest of the Loughborough girls, to get there and support her. But what end-to-end -end rugby that was. Well, one line out. Conveyor. Wait! Weaver, back for Roland. Balogun putting on the pressure. Nice bit of control on the sideline from one of the uh, Bristol assistants down there. <laughs> Good work, Walter Boy. Bristol line out. Yeah. Great kick by Helena Rowlands on your screen there, wasn't it? You know, that's nearly what. 45 metres and just a massive relief of pressure for Loughborough there. It gives them an opportunity to go and defend and to try and stop Bristol around that halfway line. Fourth start in a row at fly half for Helena Rowland. Dave Ward talked during the week that you can't look beyond her no, as a threat. No, Mercurial no, player, he describes no, her hell of a talent. She is a brilliant player. The yeah, question yeah. is, yeah. if you're John Mitchell, where do you play Helena Rowland? She's played at fullback. Played at 13, she's played at 10. Yeah, for me, she's definitely an outside back. You know, like you say, she's a phenomenal talent. And I think one of her biggest attributes is how good she is in broken field. You know, that was one of the reasons she ended up as a fullback. You know, that kick return space you get. And we see the best of Helena when she gets the opportunity to have a little bit of time and a little bit of opportunity to run. Um, in that tension, not necessarily would be your first option. You know, it's generally more about putting other people into space, which she's very good at. But for me, I think I definitely utilize her in that in them outside channels. Line up, not quite working out that time. Burgess. Bottom. Oh, look to try and get the offload out. That went backwards off left line to begin with, so it's going to be Bonner being given the chance to run. Look to take the outside of Helen Nelson. Nelson did well to size her up, but now they've got decent quick ball as Murray crashes it up off Abby Ward. Penalty. Goes against Carmela Morale. 13, not rolling. And it's Amber Reed who comes into the picture. And well, I've been mean, talking about that England picture. 
I mean, Holly Aitchison likely to have the keys so to right. the number 10 shirt, given okay. the yeah, slightly so longer and protracted right, return of Zoe Harrison, it has to be said. Okay. And, well, then, yeah. Amber Reid in that 12 position, returning Emily yeah, Scarrett too right, soon no, to start right, putting her in international right. reckoning. Then, of course, Helena Rowland, my goodness. The pictures are our Tatiana Hurd. Okay. Meg Jones, of course. OK, Rachel, let's go. Right, well, uh, it's around that time of the game, Water Katie Taylor McLean to uh, ask you who's impressed you this afternoon. But um, before that, just a reminder of everybody to stay tuned to the Vancouver 7s, TNT Sports 4, the New Look tournament currently live over there, where 12 of the world's top men's and women's 7s teams are in action. Weekend full of adrenaline-pumping stuff. Okay. Antoine Dupont doing his thing as well. Then we, of course, have got the big superpower weekend. Kicks off on Saturday, 2.45, Gloucester Hartley against Exeter Chiefs. That is live on TNT Sports 1. And then on Sunday, Loughborough Lightning in action once again at home, Franklin's Gardens to Sale Sharks. Sunday, 2.30pm, also TNT Sports 1. Plenty of PWR action for you next weekend. There's the ten. Crystal line with Burgess. Reed, Balogun, the dummy runner, then Master Mulhern crashing through the middle. The horse has been stripped. Needs somebody to tidy it up. Comes off the boot. Rachel Malcolm back from her ten minutes. Chance to just have another sprint at that Bristol defence, which she does. Morale, oh, that was a lovely show inside, to then send away Williams Morris, and the option is the ball inside, which we'll find. Talfo'o keeps it alive and finds Carmela Morale. It's lovely interplay from Loughborough Lightning. Then it's Cabea, gets low, needs the support to get there. Bristol defence is folding around the right, but Loughborough Lightning have to recognise where they've got the width and the numbers, and perhaps it's just a little slow. Matai Tonga looking to try and run at the weaker shoulder of Amber Reed. She's not got too many of those. Away it goes, Catherine Wells for Lightning. Another penalty advantage, Cabea into the carry again. Nelson at first receiver, oh, that was electric to get that away for Helena Rowland, who will score! Super hands from Nelson, so often in the ten shirt, hands it to Rowland, who wears it and gets the score. Really well worked and fully deserved from that passage of play. It really was. It was probably one of Loughborough's brightest passages that we've seen potentially all game, definitely in the second half. And they just got their little individual moments right. Some good carries. I thought Catherine Wells had a, a nice little carry there. And then, like you say, that interchange between Helena Rowland and Helena Nelson has been a massive part of how Loughborough play. And she just, she just has so much lateral pace, you know. As a defender, the last thing you want is Helena Rowlands appearing out of the back because she is so quick. You just see it here. It's a lovely little lift, and then that lateral place. Those bags are not, are not sluggish, you know. And she makes it look so, so easy there. Just acceleration, and she's away. You never forget doing the game at Epidol Way at Love Beauty when Helena Rowland basically ran around 13 players to get in and score the try. And it's approved on by the returning Emily Scarrett from the stands. Three tries on the board then. The uh, yeah, pace to get that conversion taken, which was missed. It's all about the fact that well, Loughborough Lightning, with one more try, could get their own try bonus point in defeat here. The score to win is a little bit far away, but could they put another attacking play together? Hibbert Jones sells the dummy. Tackle. Did well as well. Nelson. Morale. Her dummy inside and feed outside that really set up for Lightning on their way. Malcolm. Midfield option. Oh, it couldn't quite be held from Talfoto. Thought they were going to be through with another line break again, but the Lightning just starting to play now. So, All right, Katie, it is time for who has impressed you this evening. 
Yeah, I think, you know what it is, look, but times have been great, but probably not consistent enough. But this lady on your screen there, Abby Ward, I thought she's been phenomenal again. You know, line out, we know she's very good. She's carried, she's had multiple touches for me. Really, really strong performance from her today. This lady as well, I thought, has been very good. Pulled the strings in that back line, you know. Gross. We know she's a great distributor. Had a good carry, some nice kicking moments. Five. But Nick, for me, the, the woman of the match today Seven. is that lady packing down at the back of the scrum, uh, Rita Marsden Mulhern. She's been around, she's had through a phenomenal amount of work. She's carried very, very well for, for Bristol today. And other than this moment, being in the middle of a lot of it. Oh, you've got some uh, stunt woman per performance oh, ready to master Malhern as well. And she has continued to give Bristol Bears those metres. Tough carries and offloads, as we mentioned earlier in the match, Master Malhern. She is Katie Daly McLean, Dalian's Premier Premiership Women's Rugby Player of the Match. Uh, three up for Greece, three up for Abby, Abby. Four's one out before they're, before they're talking about. Right. Change mate. This is Amelia Williams Sorry. in the under 18s. Yeah, Midway club, former uh, number one Rachel Burford. Williams, who joined this season, comes on and replaces Scottish international Christine Belial. Tau photo. Slight of frame, but gets on with a lot of work. And straight into the action goes Williams. Morale just holding it up. Ask questions of defenders, doesn't she, in terms of her distribution, Carmela Morale. Nelson around the tackle of Christina Balogun, who has battled through that Burkitt lymphoma after signing for Bristol, coming up for a couple of years ago. Great to see Balogun in full health. Matai Tonga looking for the option, trying to stride through, pumping those legs. Now the turnover call so from let, Bristol let, Bears, let, let, and they're happy enough that that come, is the let, turnover. Let the ball come, she's still going to need it, I think. Oh. Burgess looking at the options into the final minute. Reed didn't sense that there was anything on around it. Everyone was a bit flat, had to carry it up. So. Ward. Passes it on, Burgess, Atkin Davis, Pivot Jones wanting to try and get the turnover, but well cleared out. Bottoman, chased down by De Good. Now it's away. Reed, little midfield dink as Bristol Bears go looking for another with the clock in the red. Murray. Well, it's come off the boot of Hesketh. Play on, first first snap. Rachel Malcolm just about doing enough to get the ball off the deck as Wells takes it on. It's getting super loose here. Oh, and then it's got forward by Herbert Jones. And that will give our referee the opportunity to blow the final whistle. Well, well, eight tries all in all. But most importantly for the over 3,000 crowd that have made their way to Ashton Gate on a Friday night, five of them falling the way of Bristol Bears, wrapping up that fourth try in the bonus point just after half-time. Simi Pan getting them on their way, and then the brace from Skeldon. Gallagher on the score sheet as well, along with Ward. Five tries all in all for Bristol Bears in what was a really strong home performance. A late rally from Loughborough Lightning, not quite able to do enough. And it finishing 33 points to 17 to the home side.